from the city of brotherly love. This is Shark Bite Biz with David Strausser. You just arrived to the newest episode of Shark Bite Biz. I'm your rock star wannabe host, David Strausser, and this is your place to learn how to grow a business during complete global chaos. First, though, remember, please download the Shark Bite Biz app exclusively on the Google Android google play store and that's where you can find every single episode of this show both audio and video formats are both there in the app plus you open it up you hit that little coffee you know the main menu you'll see coffee store right there you can get our fabulous fresh roasted dead house coffee right there in the app If not, head right on over to deadhousecoffee.com where you can get coffee that is roasted, sealed, and shipped to you within a 24-hour period to your doorstep. Plus, use code SHARK. You'll get 20% off. We'll get all the proceeds and continue building the biggest, best show we possibly can. Now, let's get back to today's show. We've got an amazing woman on the show Today, a leader in health and the food industry, an amazing coach. And I've got to say it because of the title of this episode, okay? Little trigger warning, disclaimer, whatever you want to call it. I want to make it clear we are not fat shaving people. I used to weigh 350 pounds myself. So these food topics are of great interest to me whenever I have someone on about physical. Um, you know, or personal or mental health, you know, and I'll tell you what, I wasn't proud of it when I was 350. Life was harder. It was more painful, harder to get jobs, harder to get promoted. People had stereotypes against me. Eventually, I did the right thing and I got all the way down to 190 up until this past August as fans of the show that have been with us since the beginning know I injured myself and was relatively immobile, needed a few surgeries. And that's part of the reason why till this day I'm still going through recovery as we speak. But that's why we downsized the show from two episodes down to one. But right now I am making the right steps. Well, most of the time, you know, I still cheat every now and then, but I'm doing most 90% of the stuff I need to to get back to where I was pre injury, lose all those extra pounds. And you'll be surprised. I mean, when you're in shape, eating healthy, you know, how much of a difference it makes with your work your energy level with your family. I'm telling you from personal experience, it makes a ton of difference. So who do we have today? None other than Dr. Pat Ballone. Dr. Patricia Ballone, DCCCSP, AP, CFMP, don't ask me what any of those mean, is a certified functional medical practitioner, coach, chiropractor, speaker, and author. She has helped thousands over the last 35 plus years stop adapting their lifestyles to pain and chronic problems by focusing on the whole person. The result is that her clients and patients find out why and the cause of their problem and identify the starting point. What, why, where, and how to begin their health journey to live longer, better, and healthier. Dr. Ballone is the founder and principal of Ask Dr. Pat Health Team Network, a company dedicated to skyrocketing your health lifestyle and mindset with strategies and programs that make sense and help you age gracefully think move and feel better as well as live longer and happier you may also see the book that she was so gracious to send to me right next to me why are you so sick fat and tired so hey without further delay let's bring dr pat right on in here Health and lifestyle. Dr. Pat, welcome to Shark Bite Biz. You just became Shark Bait. 
<laughs> I love it. You know, I'm very tasty. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there you go. There you go. I have a plate full of information. So it's, you know, awesome. that's perfect, right? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. So we have a tradition on the show. Very first question. What's your experience? What's your background? Basically, in a nutshell, tell us all what makes Dr. Pat, Dr. Pat. Well, you know, ever since I was about five years old, or, you know, right around then, we used to play doctor all the time in the neighborhood. I was always the doctor. I was never the nurse. I was never the patient. I never died. And, uh, and to <laughs> boot, <good. laughs> you know, and I've not ever had a patient who has died because of me. <laughs> so they've all lived happier, healthier, and a lot longer. So that's who I am in a nutshell. I've always been very, very curious about science. Um, and I've always been very curious as to like, why? You know, I asked, I was the person in the back of the room that after I asked it for the third time and when I was in grade school, high school and college, somebody would just say, give her duct tape. Because <laughs> I would, if I didn't understand something, I, I wanted to know, why is that? You know, why does that work that way? And so when people got sick, I wanted to know why. I mean, why do people get, well, why do people get sick? And, you know, I've, I've learned that there's only three reasons why people basically get sick. What are the three reasons why people get sick? Well, one is trauma. And um, trauma has um, to do with like birth. Nine out of 10 children who are born have some type of cervical damage from the birthing process. It also has to do with scrapes, falls, accidents, and a type of thing that create inflammation in the joints um, in somewhere in the body. And then toxins, which is the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the, you know, cleaning fluids that we use in our house, um, the you know, the, the plugins that we use to clean the air, supposedly. I just saw a news article the other day where for the very first time they detected, uh, what was it, microplastics in human, I believe it was in human blood. Well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> you know, um, it actually has been around for a long time. They, they have, they've had evidence that it's carcinogenic um, and, and or disease with some level of disease producing, which is inflammation, because all diseases have one thing in common, it's inflammation. And the last thing that makes people sick are their thoughts. It's they don't have a good mindset and they can't get a handle on their thoughts. It can undo the trauma and the toxins, whatever you do to fix that up to seven times. That's huge. You know, inflammation is something I've suffered from. They say it's hereditary because a uh, uh, psoriatic arthritis kind of runs through our family and it's not a uh, it, it's not a fun thing but i do think that there are things that are out there you know whether it's the air you breathe the water we're drinking the food we're eating stuff like that that also adds to that as well too that i use when i'm teaching about being stronger than medicine because it is possible um and that it has this person with this big mouth like wide open and it has every bit of junk food that you ever go to when you're having a stressful day or if you're traveling um, and you go through McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or Hardee's or one of those places like that um, and it has this food just being like funneled into your mouth you know because we have control of exactly what goes in our mouth and what we choose to eat the question is whether or not we know what we know it, it the question is making um, an attempt to learn more things so that we can share. I can share my wisdom as how, how to make better lifestyle choices. Now, I'm very, you know, this is a business podcast, so I'm very pro business. And one of the things, though, that I don't like is the business of food itself. I guess you could say that food has become too too corporatized, I guess, you know, like it, it, it's too many big companies are running what we are able to put through our, you know, put into our mouths at an affordable price. And I, I think that's really hurting us health wise. Does that make sense? Well, you know, the, you know, what is the food industry or the health, like the health industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. And you have a lot of corporations who make food that looks like food, but it isn't food. You know, I can tell you a, a funny story in like in the business of health, right? Um, and is that I was in a grocery store about a year ago to the state approximately, and I was looking at two kinds of broccoli. And so if, you know, 
and there's one that was organic and the other one was traditional broccoli. And I was standing there and I was looking at, I must have looked really pensive because this woman said, asked me, um, what's, are you in deep thought with broccoli or something like some kind of way she broke into the, my thought process. And I said to her, well, you know, I think broccoli's like dating, you know? And I said, we have a broccoli that is, you know, GMO that is not, it looks like broccoli, but nutritionally it looks like the same thing too, but it really isn't. You know, and it's also sprayed with pesticides like, you know, glycophosphates, which are carcinogenic and other other chemicals, too. And then you have this broccoli, which is organic broccoli, which is the one on my right hand. And I said to her, you know, I go that one. I said, you know, if you want to date, relate him to dating. I said, that's the guy who takes you out, makes sure that you eat good food, make sure you get sleep. If the blankets fall off of you in the middle of the night, you know, he gets up and makes sure that you're covered up and tucked in and you get enough sleep so you can go to work refreshed and you're always beautiful. And the other guy who's the the GMO one, you know, he keeps you up to two o'clock in the morning. You know, you go out drinking, dancing, and you don't get to sleep till two or three o'clock in the morning. And then you have to get up at six o'clock to go to work and he gets to sleep. And so she asked me, well, which one was the organic one? And um, I said, the one in my right hand, and she she reached over and grabbed it and she walked away and she goes, get your own. (laughs) And I I laughed. I mean, I really laughed out loud, kind of laughed. And as I just thought, I go, it's it's interesting because, you know, we don't think about our health very much unless we become in crisis. And then when we get in crisis, we want miracles to happen. I think what I was, you know, and that's a great story that you just gave. What I was getting to, I think, I can elaborate off your story is that to pick the broccoli that was on the right hand, they make it harder because it's more expensive, you know? So for a lot of families, I mean, think about a typical middle income family. Don't think of the top 10 or 15% of people think of the, you know, lower 60% of people, especially with inflation being seven plus percent as it is right now, the food shortages that they're saying that's coming with the fertilizers and stuff like that. Those prices are going to go up even more. And you're going to see families that really have to pick, you know, the organic and do we just get less food or do we pick the non-organic and get more food? You know what you do, you do the best that you possibly can do. But what you get out of your house is things that are, that are truly um, disease producing like sugar, you know, artificial sweeteners like margarine, you know, things like that. Um, oils like um, canola oil, even if it's organic. You just can't do it at high heat, you know, and also avocados, you can't bake them because when you bake avocados, they oxidize, you know, and so you don't want to, you don't ever want to heat an avocado up. I was trying that with the paleo diet where you have the, you have the egg on top of the uh, avocado and you just bake it with, some, uh, you know, some light oil or some uh, uh, salt, pepper, and pretty much it. I've done it once and we, my wife's Peruvian. I lived in Mexico for 15 years. So, um, we, you know, I've eaten a lot of avocado living in Mexico, natural, never had it baked or prepared. Uh, same thing with Peru and with my wife living up here in the States with us. I mean, we, a lot of fresh avocado. That was the first time ever I've had the bake avocado. Cause I kept seeing that image and I'm like, I want to try this. Is it actually good? And it actually really, it, I'll tell you, honestly, God, it tasted good. I did not expect you to say that it would have oxidation in it. Yeah, you don't want to cook it. Um, it. And also, you know, like what you can do is just have it at room temperature, do the egg separately and put the egg on top of it. It tastes the same. Exactly. That's, I think that's a good thing that people forget just because it tastes good. I mean, I, I was sincerely surprised because I I've never ate, eaten a cooked avocado and I've been eating them my whole life. I moved like, seriously, I moved to Mexico when I was 18 from rural Pennsylvania and I've been eating them for all of my adult life. Never once have I had a cooked or baked avocado. And I usually would think of that as just yuck. Even if I have avocado on food and I need to reheat that food, Okay, I'm thinking like, yuck, that's not good. I don't want to reheat something that has avocado on it. And 
I tried it. It was really good, but I'm never going to eat it again. I do want to take advantage of, of it since I have you here. Okay. Now this episode has not aired yet, but it will air by the time that your episode does air. And uh, we had Paul Shapiro who wrote the book clean meat. Okay. And he is the CEO of an alternative meat company. I believe it was the better meat co is the name of his company. And unlike impossible. And he's like, yeah, they're good, but they got a lot of stuff in it. His company actually recreates a meat like substance using actually just fungi, natural fungi. Okay, what do you think about the alternative meats out there and stuff? I usually try to stay away from them altogether. Well, so do I. Um, but the, you know, I don't mind, you know, there's a lot of, see, I look at fungi as, as a, as mold. Um, and it isn't that I don't eat it, but, and there's a lot of medicinal properties to specific mushrooms, you know, but I'm not keen on having, you know, it, I never gravitated towards having portobello instead of like a port of mushroom that's stuffed with something or rather um, as an alternative to like a hamburger. I think if you're going to sin, you should just sin and sin well, but not very often. Just justified my pizza week. Thank you, Dr. Pat. Well, just make sure how you have your pizza. I mean, it's just like there's, they're not, pizzas aren't bad for you. It's pizzas are bad for you if you have like everything in the kitchen sink on top of them. Um, especially a lot of difference of the like these like prepared meats like pepperoni and salami and things like that that have a lot of height they're high nitrates you know, and that type of thing so I don't mind pizza you know you can make it with cauliflower crust if you like cauliflowers which doesn't even taste like cauliflowers I usually do keto low carb somewhere in between is usually what I do now as we were kind of talking about earlier Quarter four of last year, as my viewers all know, I kind of injured my back. And that's why we scaled the show back to one show a week. And I had to get not one, but two surgeries because the first one failed. And I, you know, kind of fell out of the, the routine, you know, being on steroids for like three months and gabapentin really didn't help either. Gabapentin is not good for anybody, and nor animals. <laughs> I was eating mostly the same as okay we were cooking a little bit less than what we we normally cook everything fresh again my wife's peruvia she's used to making home cooked meals from scratch like every day that's the life that she grew up on and that's how she does things but when i was injured and you know for about three months i was pretty much bedridden uh, before the first surgery and kind of between surgeries too. So we, we cooked a little bit less, got a little bit more takeout, um, which is not normal, but now we're getting back to normality once again and, and, and cooking. But my point is taking the guy, pen and taking the steroids. I mean, I put on at least 40 pounds during that, uh, five, six month period. It, it wasn't, uh, wasn't good. I mean, I went up to probably about two thirty, two thirty five. I usually weighed about one ninety beforehand. And now that I'm off the meds and I'm back on the diet, it's starting to go down I'm into two twenties. Uh, I'm still afraid to look at the scale, but the doctors tell me each week that it's going down. Uh, so I don't I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> I don't want to know. Uh, it, it scares me, but because uh, I used to be big and I worked so hard to get it off. When you take, you know, one thing, you know, that I always, especially for older people, I always tell clients to have, if they're telling me about their parents and the such, or they're in nursing homes or they're in, they're in the hospital, they should always have a clearance test for over drugs that they're taking so that you know how well you're clearing them from your body. So they know the exact dose that you should be getting. Um, that, that's an important feature, especially like in older people. I mean, for instance, like my mom, when she was in, she, her wheelchair flipped over and, uh, in a transport van because they didn't stabilize it and her head slammed into the steel grade. And she was in a nursing home for 10 months before she passed. Well, the thing is, is that they gave her, they were giving her, um, some drugs that were like tramadol. I, I believe it was, I would have to go back, look at my notes. She started hallucinating. It should have been a clue that she was being overdosed with the drug 
And a lot of times that happens because, you know, because she's going, your father came to visit me. I said, mom, dad died around 35 years ago. Oh, you know, and she's going, oh, no, he was here. Oh, he was here. You know, and but, you know, she was hallucinating. And I said, what did they just give you? I called up the nurse's station to find out what they gave her. I said, how come you didn't do a clear, drug clearance test on her? So you knew if she how she was handling it. So you don't keep on giving her the same drug again and again and again. And now she's got it rampant through her system and she's not coherent. So you deem her incompetent. I mean, I had a really big problem during that that time with the level of care my mother specifically was getting. But it happens to a lot of people. It's not just my mother. I mean, it's it's in. And so when I hear you talk about drugs, I'm going like, well, you know, your liver clears all toxins out of your system in order to think better, feel better, move better you know, and heal better, your liver has got to be able to get rid of toxins in your system and it's got to dump them into your intestinal tract. Or if they're small enough, they have to end up in your bladder. So they both places end up in the toilet. But that's not what happens. I mean, and look at that study. I don't remember when it was, but I was talking to somebody the other day about it, that they were finding all sorts of, you know, narcotic drugs in the water supplies, you know, and then, and, and waste. I mean, it's just like, that's, that was a big thing recently. I saw that study as well, too. And there's a lot of things that I see uh, that uh, kind of scare me. And I think for as controversial as somebody like, for example, Joe Rogan, it's weird to refer to him as controversial now, but uh, apparently he is in today's world. Uh, but a lot of the things like that, as far as the water supply, the uh, the plastic stuff like that are things that I actually learned listening on his show, which I thought was uh, was insane hearing these experts talk about it. And then they're pulling up the news articles to kind of real time fact check it. It's amazing. Everybody has plastic in them and everybody has heavy metal in them, especially if you live in the United States. It's prevalent. And so if you buy water bottles at a gas station or in front of a grocery store that's sitting and baking in the sun, you're drinking plastic and it doesn't leave your body. It gets stored in blood, brain, bone and fat because the liver can't handle it. And when the liver can't handle it, that's the best place it has to put it. So it always goes to your weakest link, which is why my book identifies your weakest link. So you know where to pay your time, energy, money and attention to. Um, So it's. It's interesting, like for you, for instance, going back to you um, and, you know, if you and I actually had a, a sit down real like chat about that, I would probably depending upon what I have two questionnaires that I look at for that purpose. One is called the HQ, which means health questionnaire gut. Um, and the other one is the MDQ, which is metabolic detoxification questionnaire. What that tells me, the last one is if you're a candidate to do a detox and also whether or not you need to do one because you don't always need to do one. And then the gut one just tells me what your score is because if your gut's not healthy, you don't want those toxins going back into your gut if you've got damage in your gut someplace and they keep on recycling those toxins again and again to your liver, which when it gets overstressed, puts them in blood, brain, bone, and fat. That was something I got got a little little bit away from. So originally... I injured my back. It's been about 10 years now. And it was just, I woke up one morning. I didn't do anything, but I guess the disc slip and pinch nerves. And for about two months, I couldn't walk. And, you know, it was a very tough time in my life. But at the time, I weighed 350 pounds. And everybody just kept saying, well, it's because you're fat. It's because you're fat. And, uh, you know, so instead of checking other things out, uh, they're just like, uh, lose weight. They sent me for weight loss surgery. Uh, then they found out, oh, well, you have, you're fat because you actually have a thyroid condition, uh, which also runs in the family too. Everybody, male and female, like on my mom's side, grandmother's side has thyroid and psoriatic arthritis. Like almost everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody. It runs through that very specific line of family, those two conditions. Well, your saving grace is your wife. And because if you keep, if people keep on eating the way that their parents did and their grandparents said, their DNA will express itself. So we know we're not our DNA. We're how our DNA responds to the environments called epigenetics. And so when you're by, when you respond to your environment, if you have weak links, a bunch of them, and they're all stressed out, you will, you will have a certain pattern that comes out from that. So the idea, like, you know, even in, 
my big book, the Why Sick Bat Retired book, you know, when you go into that, you know, then, then, you know, and answer those questions in there, it tells you what your pattern is and it really helps you focus and funnel in on where it's really important to pay attention now, not like six months from now, not like five years ago now in present time. So that way you can have the best information and you can do things that are not, you're not reacting to a crisis and you have the answers right in front of you. It's not, and you can also use, you know, those questions as an advocating tool when you're talking to a physician, because a lot of times they only give you 15 minutes of that. And if you can't express yourself and talk in their language, they don't want, they, they don't want to talk in yours as it takes too long. Some of the doctors I have now, my, well, I'd say my pain management doctor, who's been my main doctor through the source of this pain. I mean, he's somebody he, he's about my age, maybe a year or two older than me. He's got a family and he's has a lot of the same back issue. I mean, not as severe as me. He didn't need surgeries or anything like I did, but uh, he's kind of gone through it. And it, it's kind of given me that level of comfort that I have someone treating me that like other doctors will be like, well, if your back hurts, why did you pick up your three-year-old? And it's like, have you never had a three-year-old before? You know, and this this doctor gets it. He's like, I understand, like you have to sacrifice yourself. And then because they made me get the weight loss surgery, it's weird because, you know, I had gastric sleep. So the way that I react to medicines is different. I can't take NSAIDs. I can't do some other things. And it, it's been very uh, it's been a very unique experience. In fact, uh, it, it's weird, like Valium, I'm fine with. But if I try to take a tiantidine, which is, I guess, a synthetic version of Valium in a way, like I'll hallucinate off that. It's insane. Well, you know, it's just like you're, you know, like I go back to the, you know, the gut being injured, right? So no, you knowing what part of your gut, you know, that needs attention right now would be very helpful for you because, you know, you can heal. The gut heals pretty quickly. You know, and, and if you can do it and if you got the components there, there's no reason why that can't happen. That's the one thing I got away from him. I'd say probably the last uh, two years I've gotten away from probiotics. And I noticed when I was taking probiotics as far as doing, you know, the dieting exercise, all the things you're supposed to do, eating healthy um, protein shakes, uh, like good protein shakes, not the, the bad type and taking probiotics as well, too. Like it really helped keep the weight off. And I noticed if I stopped taking probiotics after a couple of months, even if I kept my diet the same, it always seems like maybe the gut health deteriorates and I join a little bit, you know, uh, gain a little bit more weight. Well, you know, keeping, is that because of the gut health? Part of that's because of gut health. And also it's like, you know, what, you know, what, how you're combining your foods too. You know, you got to take a look at how that happens. Um, so when, um, I am dropping into the chat box for you right now, two questionnaires that I just got them talking about. Um, so after the show that you can do them and then you can, we can have a talk about that, um, you know, and just so you see that, but you know, the probiotics, the, the gut, you know, the, the gut layer um, is only one. There's only one cell layer between what you eat. So if it gets damaged and food is not processed in the places that it needs to be processed and the right enzymes are there, it gets sucked into your blood system. And it goes through that cycle that I just described about five minutes ago of going to the liver and if the liver can't do it, then it puts it back out and it goes into your intestinal tract and it will get reabsorbed again and again and again until um, if the liver gets overwhelmed, it stores it and blood, brain, bone, fat. That was, you know, that's what basically happens, you know, with that. Um, and, you know, you, we talk about business, right? You know, and so I've always, you know, somebody, people used to ask me all the time when I was uh, working full time and I was seeing patients Monday through Thursday, because I would see, I'd work from, I don't know how many hours that is, eight times four, 32. So it's 32 hours a week and four days. And um, I would see people and people ask me, Dr. Pat, how do you do it? I mean, I see your car here at 730 in the morning. And I went, really? Does that I go, and then you miss your appointment later in the day hmm. you know, and, and tease them. But the thing is, is that, you know, um, you know, it's just like I ate, you know, I, I don't lead you by example. If I don't coach, I don't coach. People say like, are you a coach? I am a coach. I am a mentor, but I put it in one package. I mentor and coach because I think, you know, a, a lot of coaches do 
in my opinion, and I'm sure a lot of them are going to hate me in five seconds, is that I don't get a lot of value from coaches because I want someone to tell me, I'm coming to you because I have a problem. I want you to tell me, I want you to lead. I want you to influence me. I want you to inspire me to do it the right way. You know, I don't want to have to like, you know, why are you making me, I'm already struggling. Why would you make me struggle more? You know, (laughs) I just like, this is the issue. You've got this going on. How do you get to the finish line in good shape? So I tell people, I said, I ate very well. I did that. I practice what I preach. Oh, you have to, you have to lead by example, especially these days. Because it is, I mean, this isn't like the 80s or even the 90s or the 70s or earlier, where if you weren't practicing what you were preaching, it was pretty easy to hide. Today, with the internet, with social media, if you're not practicing what you're preaching, I mean, it's going to get out eventually. Someone's going to snap a video. Someone's going to take a picture. I mean, you see it happening, like, for example, during covid with the mask mandates where, you know, politicians say one thing and then they did another thing privately, you know, you know, you, you see that it, it's going to get out. It, it, yeah. It's going to get out eventually if you don't lead by example and practice what you preach. I mean, that's what I do. I think that's one of the reasons that I've become successful as you know, in business, but I do want to ask you, cause we do got to get wrapping up and I have two important questions I want to ask you before we finish is what motivates you both as a doctor and a business person? So what motivates me as an individual? Um, because I think I don't, I, I don't equate myself, you know, like what you see is what you get. And so the, my, you know, who I am off camera and who I am not, you know, dealing with a client, you know, um, is the same person. That's, that's one thing that I, 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 I'm saying that's amazing because I tell my team the exact same thing. Like, I'm like, guys, you, you see me in front of clients, you see me privately while I'm with you. Like I treat everybody the same way. It's not like I flip a switch and it's like, Oh, okay. Let's do a dog and pony show for this employee or this manager or this, uh, uh, prospect or this customer. I am fair and neutral across the board. I am who I am. You get what you get. And you know, sometimes I don't know when to shut up as a lot of salespeople struggle with that, but you know, it, it, I'm transparent. Like I'm going to treat you equally, regardless of what part of my life you're in personal, you know, or public or business life. Yeah, I could, I get you, you know, and I understand, I understand that, but I always have been that way. I mean, and, my, and when patients used to come in, it's just like, they, you know, someone saw me outside my office. I was the same person as I was inside my office. Um, you know, I've been told I should have my own comedy show sometimes. (laughs) Um, I don't think I'm funny, but people, people have come back to me and said, that. you know, but I like, you know, but I like to see people enjoy their life. It gives me a lot of pleasure, you know, and it gives me a lot of pleasure if, especially if I participated in that person being able to live their life better, simpler, you know, keep moving forward. And it's just like, because why complicate something that doesn't necessarily have to be complicated? I mean, I wake up in the morning. Well, I, my why is I love challenges. I like solving problems. And, you know, and, and I like making sense of those problems. And I want to do it in the most simplest, fastest, better way so that you can get on second and move forward. Why people want to stay in muck up to their neck, I have no clue. You know, you, then you got to shower off again. I mean, who wants to do that? I think you know, you've got a problem. What's the solution to it? You know, you, you, you break something, you say, oh my God, I broke that. Can I replace it for you? You know, what do I need to do to make it up to you? You know, I, I missed a communication with this guy that I was in Dallas, Texas a week ago, um, somewhere around that, like, well, yeah, a week ago. Now it feels like it was long, longer than that. But the, um, you know, I was supposed to meet somebody out there and they text me, but I was in the course. And when I was in my course in uh, this conversation, I turned my phone off. So I missed the message completely. And so I said, what can I do to make it up to you? And he goes, buy my book. So you know what I did? I opened up amazon.com and I bought his book. I, I do the same exact thing. You know, I'll usually put it here during the intro and the outro, but um, what I end up doing, and a lot of times I don't even tell the people I do it is, especially if they send it to me for, uh, for free, just to to say thank you and for me to promote it for them is I'll also go, I'll buy their book on Amazon, especially 
if it's on Audible because I'm a big fan of audio books. I like listening to podcasts, books, stuff like that. But I usually go uh, by the books and I actually listen to almost every single one of them I can find. There's only a few odd ones out there that are like ebooks or whatever only that I haven't, um, you know, I haven't read. But I do that because I like to support people, you know? Well, you wouldn't find my book at Audible because there is a downloadable, um, you know, a questionnaire that you have to do. And so you can't do that questionnaire the way that it's set up um, um, right now on Audible. So I did send you a PDF version of it because we were talking today and I realized that I didn't send you, I did, we didn't get to that part of it. But you can always choose an image like the one I have behind me, you know, of my book. Right. And then there's also the back cover that Amazon has, you know, that um, which on this cover on the, the new uh, second edition, which became an international bestseller. Uh, yay. Um, yay. 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 Um, and um, it's my picture on the second edition because Amazon totally screwed this up. And the second edition, they have my first and my back cover of my first edition with the second edition front cover. And so we, we've been going back and forth with Amazon to get the second edition back cover with the second edition front cover. So how you know that is that my picture is on the bottom on the second edition. So you're, you're basically saying that there's a limited edition copy of your book out there. On the first edition. <laughs> and there's also the, the Kindle because the Kindle has all the links that you would need for, oh, you know, yeah. all the important links for that. And I always like a great review. You know, the, the makings of, I think, a book and how it's just, uh, I watched an artist recently start a fresh canvas from scratch and how it started out and how it ended up like in less than 30 minutes later was night and day. And I think when people have books and they and they're publishing them, you know, they're expressing their wisdom or their research so that they can share their knowledge with a lot of people. So you can have a benefit of enhancing your life if the book resonates with you. That's awesome. So last question I have for you is where can we find your book? Where can we find out more about Dr. Pat? Well, there's a lot of places you can find out more about me. You can just Google my name, <laughs> ask, Dr. <laughs> ask Dr. Pat Health Team Network or Dr. Pat Boulon. Um, and it's spelled exactly the way underneath my, um, where our headshot is right now in the, um, in, when we're talking. Yeah. And uh, everybody watching the show, we will uh, definitely have the link down below in the description as we do with every single episode, audio and video. It'll be right underneath the uh, the introduction. You know, other digital versions are out available. Uh, Barnes and Noble. I was just in a Barnes and Noble that asked me to do a signing in there, which I, you know, uh, they ordered them when I get back down to Georgia, where I'm doing tidying up a work project. Um, and that work project was a live. You know, um, we recorded a course um, called "Be Stronger, Be Vibrant, Be Healthier," and you know, healthier and be stronger than medicine because it's possible. You just have to put the little time and the effort going like, what is it that I can do that enhances my life as opposed to detract from it? Because every bit of food that you eat is either being helpful or it's taking you away from your health goals and finish line. Healthy habits are critical. They are, you know, so you can find me on LinkedIn. That's how we found each other. That's you know? how we and, found each other. You know, I have an Instagram. And I'm on Facebook. You know, I'm awesome. everywhere. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on Instagram guzzling down this. cheeseburgers, aren't you, Dr. Pat? Yeah, you'll see me. With, yeah. you know, I do cheeseburgers every once in a while, but they're probably like about oh. once every three or four months. And that, and I like them. I like sloppy sandwiches. Oh, oh my God. That's it. So I have an 18 year old and he only wants a nice, neat sandwich. And this is our big argument because I don't eat a lot. So if I do order a sandwich, I've got a you know, extra saw. I, I need a sloppy thing where it's dripping down the sides. That's how I like sandwiches, uh, burgers, whatever. And we always argue back and forth because he doesn't like the mess. Oh, I just <laughs> like, you know, the messier, the better. I mean, it's just, yeah, for some exactly. reason, I equate, you know, the, the mammalian brain, which is the middle brain that equates, you know, an action um, and an emotion oh. that stores it. It's involuntary, like the primitive brain, which is, I call it lizard brain. And the conscious brain is the one we're talking brain. with right now. So yeah. the lizard brain is the one that tells you, like, don't do it. Stop, like, slam on the brakes or you're going to run over that kid or the, like, run into the tree or the car or you're going to, yeah. you know, 
Parouse on ice if you live up north. And so it's just being able to have control over that. But the mammalian brain is the one that I have that relates, you know, and this is a great, this is interesting. This will be really great for all your people and your businesses. This is a business platform. So the mammalian brain is the holy grail of marketing because in the holy grail of marketing, oh, it is because the mammalian brain, what it does is um, it equates an emotion and it, um, and it saves it in the mammalian brain mm-hmm. with a feeling, you know, and it anchors it. So if I had a bad experience, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm struggling with this. And every time I do this, I go out the door and I make a right hand turn. My life is a big struggle. But I'm like, oh, look, it's not struggle. But every time I go right or if I go out of somebody else's house and I make that right hand turn, that analogy, then I'm going to feel a struggle, even if it's not a struggle. I purposely try not to make left hand turns, just so you know. I, I'm one of those. <laughs> I'll go around the block if I have to, if it's all right. Anyways, hey, Dr. Pat. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I really, I really enjoyed this. And I know a lot more about the three brains. So when we talk on your appointment with me, when we talk about those two yeah. questionnaires, we'll talk a little bit more oh, about that. Then you can share. Definitely. We'll do a follow-up episode. We'll go through that. We'll share it all. So uh, name your book one more time. Tell everybody out there that's just listening. Why are you sick, fat, and tired? Find out now on Amazon. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Dr. Pat. It's been a You're pleasure. Welcome. You're yeah. welcome. Thank Cheers. you so much. Wow, that was an awesome chat with Dr. Pat Pelode. First, you all know the routine. If you found this interview inspiring, if it gave you the warm and fuzzies, do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. But if you really want to help us out, because you know Shark Bite Biz is the greatest kept secret in the world of small business. Please do me a favor, share us out to your network, your colleagues, your friends, your family, anywhere that you dwell on the interwebs, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Minds, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever it is. I would love to see nothing more than Dr. Papalone and Shark Bite Biz out there trending. Now let's get back to our rock star guest, Dr. Pat. As I said during the intro and the interview itself, this is one of those topics that I kind of take an extra interest into. It's something that has hit me personally. And just last year, I had two major back surgeries. Uh, One in October, it failed, and they had to redo it three days before Christmas. I mean, our Christmas was shot <laughs> to top it off our whole family except for me and miraculously did you know they all had covid i didn't have it so i was lucky enough because i'm vax and all that stuff they did the surgery anyways but you know because of that i do suffer from chronic pain psoriatic arthritis a thyroid problem and a couple of other things on um, My own personal health journey, I learned that eating what you think is healthy, like everybody remember back like the kale craze. Well, that isn't exactly what may or may not be right for your own body. For example, for someone with a thyroid condition like I have, raw kale, not good. It can worsen your condition. I think what it does technically is it can make your thyroid medication ineffective. So you can only keep uh, eat it, whether it's cooked, I think steamed or fully cooked or something like that. I don't know. I stay away from kale altogether. So for me, as I mentioned before, personally, I go down the route of, you know, the exercise, the cardio, walking, hitting the steps. You know, I try to get 15, 20,000 steps a day. But I am more of a low carb keto type person with daily fasting on most days, except when we do pizza. That's my cheat day because mm, pizza, calzone. Ah. I love it, and it is so good out here in Pennsylvania. Anyways, I hope that interview gave you some insight into the mind and methodology of one of the country's leading experts, one of the world's leading experts out there, so that many people, especially Americans, that are suffering with these types of conditions, I mean, it really comes down to help is simple. It just takes finding the right doctor, like Dr. Papalode, as well as finding the commitment in your heart to change your lifestyle. Before I ended up getting gastric sleeve, I mean, it really came down to 
the doctor wanted to see if I was committed. I had to lose 40 pounds beforehand, and then they did it, and I kept it up up until this past year where I went up a little, but I'm already coming back down because I committed to that lifestyle. The commitment to the lifestyle, just like you do for your job, for your work, is so critical for success. The first part of any journey is going to be doing just as she said. Find out the what, why, where, and how to begin your own personal health journey. So awesome stuff, Dr. Pat Ballone. Thank you so much for coming on, answering my questions, and sending me a copy of this amazing book. Remember, you can grab Why Are You Sick? fat and tired out there on Amazon. We're going to have the link down below on the descriptions, whether you're watching on video or listening to the audio version. Check the description right below the blurb. There's going to be links to Dr. Pat's site as well as her book. Question of the day. How does what you eat affect your work and personal life? I'd love to hear some personal stories. I got personal for you all. Let's hear your personal stories. Leave a comment down below on YouTube. Do you want to be on the show? I know I've been dangling this for a couple months now, but we will be starting a live stream. It just has been delayed a little bit. Like I said, going through some health issues that I'm wrapping up. But once I get done through this, we're going to be starting a live stream interviews at sharkbitebiz.com and if you're watching on youtube please join the channel three dollars a month you can become a baby shark and you get to hear from experts each and every week just like dr pat Pelode. yeah if not you don't want to give money through big tech don't worry head right on over to deadhousecoffee.com use code shark you'll get the freshest coffee available delivered to your doorstep Okay, use code chart, get 20% off. We'll get the proceeds to keep doing what we're doing. And you all know this by now, but I'll tell you again. I'm David Strasser. This is Shark Bite Biz. We'll see you all next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Shark Bite Biz. We hope you got some insightful info from this podcast. Be sure to subscribe to us through your favorite podcast app and visit us on the web at www.sharkbitebiz.com. How has business changed for you in the 20s? Email us at podcast at sharkbitebiz.com so you can join us and share your story.